Hello, buenos dias. Hoy es miércoles, Wednesday. It is the 10th of March. March 10th. And things started getting shut down a year ago this month. My, my, my. Well, uh, they can shut us down from meeting each other temporarily, but nobody can stop us from going to the Bible, studying God's word. Amen? Come on, cheer up. Why do you look so sad today? You haven't had coffee? What's with that? Come on, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. It's never God's will to be depressed or be sad. The devil wants us sad. And when we're not, he gets mad. But we're going to rejoice because the joy of the Lord is our strength. Now let's finish up the letter to the church in Pergamum. Verse 17, whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who is victorious, I will give some of the hidden manna. I will also give that person a white stone with a new name written on it, known only to the one who receives it. Now, doing real talk now, right? Total transparency. I know two or three different theories, maybe four, on what that white stone is with a new name written on it, known only to the one who receives. I know the theories. But can I look at you and tell you, thus saith the Lord, this is what that means. I cannot, so I will not. But there's a meaning to it. And God must have revealed it to the church it was sent to, to Pergamum. But let's look at the rest of it. Whoever has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who is victorious, I will give some of the hidden manna. So perhaps you heard my message on Sunday, this past Sunday, about the 13 words that are repeated seven times in the Bible. No other long sentence is repeated that many times. Whoever has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Seven times in book of Revelation. It must be awfully important. We found out that God is alive. The Holy Spirit is on planet Earth and he is alive. And he spoke to that church and he's still speaking now. He's not creating new doctrine or articles of faith. The canon of scripture is closed. But he does speak. He does correct. He does lead. He does guide. He does send people out on mission. The Holy Spirit does that. Some people are such cessationists, they don't even believe in the electric light bulb. They're still going by candles. They want to live in the Reformation era with lanterns. God is alive. God still speaks. There's no verse that says that the Holy Spirit will stop speaking. Scripture is closed but not the letters to the churches. There's a letter. I, pastors and I have talked about this countless time around the country, around the world. There's a letter to your church. There's a letter to my church. There's the way Jesus sees things. I know, I know this. There's a letter to you, I would imagine. I know. I know what you're facing. I know what you're going through, the hostility of those around you. I know how hard it is with the money that you make. I know the hardship. I know how hard it is being cooped up in, in, in where you are with so many people in the apartment. I know. But here's what I want to say. And those words of commendation and encouragement, the Spirit is still speaking. How? Through the Word, through the Bible itself, verses, through the still small voice of the Spirit, through a song through a sermon, the Spirit speaks and you know it. It's not the guy talking, the Spirit's talking to me, convicting me. How can we be victorious? To him who is victorious, to the one who's victorious, I will give the hidden manna. And in all seven letters, there is to the one who is victorious. There, It's in there somewhere, usually at the end. In two of the letters, more toward the middle. So to be victorious, we have to hear from God. We've got to be in touch with God. 
can't be so filled with the things of this world and and Facebook and and Twitter and oh social media and whatever. You got to have an ear and then you have to listen. I starting with me, not you, me. Primero, yo. What is the Spirit saying? How can I bring more glory to God? What do I have to get rid of in my life that's crept in? Anyone who's victorious, now that's mentioned seven times. So that's victors and then there's non-victors. They're called losers. They lose the battle of faith. They lose the battle of spiritual warfare. Obviously, to the one who's victorious, I will give these rewards seven times mentioned, different rewards. So what's the number one thing, thing when we meet each other as believers on the phone even now? Or maybe you're to call someone today. Maybe you're concerned that they're not living a victorious life. They've been beguiled. They've been tricked. They've been lied to. They got discouraged. That's a big thing Satan uses. So when we meet together, we should be thinking, oh, what can I say or do to help them be victorious today? You can't help them be victorious next Friday or last Saturday. But today it's possible. We can all be victorious today. Jesus gives us the power to be more than conquerors, not just conquerors, not just victorious, more than that, stealing some of what's owned by Satan back into the kingdom. To him, to the person, her, who's victorious, be a winner. Don't you want to be victorious? I want you to be victorious. The thought of believers in my church falling away from God and not being victorious in the end just makes you lay awake at night. That's the truth. Like, what could I have done more? What could I have said more? Oh, God. Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name that all of us will be victorious today. Give us that hidden manna that food that satisfies our soul, not just our stomach. Strengthen anyone who's under immediate attack right now. God, lift them up, please. You know what they're going through. Look at their tears and count them as prayers like you did for David. And make us more than conquerors. You will do that today in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.